Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be looking how to set up a FEM analysis using the part design and the FEM workbench. We'll end up making this model here, something simple like this, that we can run the analysis against. I'll be first creating this bracket and then showing how to edit this to add this reinforcement. We'll be applying fixed constraints and loads to the actual model itself. So I hope you're enjoying these videos. Let's have a look how we'd use this FEM workbench. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. For the FEM analysis, I'm going to be using the part design model of a simple bracket. And if we look, we have a simple pad, which has been created from a sketch. And then from that, we have another sketch to create pockets with. Very simple model. We just collapse the body. The FEM workbench is pre-installed with FreeCAD. And we first need an analysis container, also available for model and analysis container. Once we've added that, we need to add some fixed constraints. Now these will be these holes here, as though a bolt or a screw or some kind of fixture is applied through them. So we'll select this one here. This is a mechanical constraint. It's also available from the model mechanical constraints and constraint fixed. Click that, we get the panel on the left-hand side where we can add faces. Let's click add and we can add the faces by clicking on them. Once we've added the faces, so you can see them there, this will be fixed. Hit OK. We now need to add the force. So that one is this one here, constraint force. Make sure nothing's selected and use the constraint force. And our panel displays the properties or the parameters for the force in here. Same principle applies. We apply the force. I'm going to apply it to the top. Click add. Select the face. Now you notice the force is being driven upwards here. We've got a load of one newton left and we can reverse the direction. We also can use this direction here, which we can use on an edge. So I'm going to apply it to this edge here. So click direction. Then select an edge, select the edge, and then click direction. Notice the direction is flowing, and we can use the reverse if we wanted to. I want it going downwards. So we're going to use the direction again, and select this edge, and click direction. And check the reverse. So we've got the direction of the load. That's okay that. We now have to give our model a material. To do that, we come up to the top and select the material for solid. Click that and we get a number of FEM materials that we can choose from. We drop this down. We can see we've got concrete, glass, graphite, etc. in here. I'm going to go for PLA, though this was being 3D printed. This applies the density, mechanical properties and thermal properties to that model. Let's just click OK to take the defaults. Inside the analysis now, we have the constraint fixed, the constraint force, and the material. The material is available for model and materials, and material for solid. We need to add a solver to this so it can solve the actual model itself. That's available here, the solver, or models, and we want the solver, Calculate standard. 
click that and that gets applied to the analysis as well. This is where we start applying this analysis to the body. Let's open up the body and make sure the tip operation, the last operation is selected, which will be the pocket. Let's just hide these. Collapse those and select the tip operation, the pocket. Make sure the body is active. So if this is not in bold, we need to right click and toggle active body. Select the pocket operation and we'll create a mesh from this. And this is a fem mesh and it lives here. There's a number in here and we're going to use the one with the N. The fem mesh from Shape by NetGen. Also available from mesh. And the fem mesh from Shape by NetGen. Click that. And mesh is going to be applied. There are a number of settings that we can play with in here. I'm going to drop the max size down to five. And I've got the second order checked and we'll hit OK. The mesh gets applied to the body. You can see it there. If I click on this mesh. We see the shape is the pocket and we can change the settings within here. Also notice the tip operation has become hidden. Now let's apply our mechanical analysis. Come down to the solver and double click it. A panel will appear on the left. The analysis type will stay a static and we'll write to the .imp file. Write is complete and then we can run the calculations. Once the calculations have finished with no errors, we get a bar on the right hand side and then we can close this. Here we have the results in here, including the pipeline, which I'm going to press the space bar on. We've got the CCX results, which will come up to the toolbar. And in here, we'll see the show results. Click that, we get the panel pop up on the left hand side here. If I close this, it will disappear. So we need to come back into this mesh and press the space bar. We can also access it from double clicking on the tree view and that's CCX result. And this is where we can apply the different stresses and displacement. So I've clicked this one here and we can see the stresses within. And click on the show placement and use the slider bar and you see the more stress we can add to the top. We can see how that's bending. Different materials will bend in different ways. So this is all well and good, but how do we change the model underneath? Let's close this and bring back that mesh. I'm going to change this body. Let's click on analysis and press the space bar. That will hide everything that you see on the screen. And we can come back to the body, click on the pocket and show that. Let's go back to the part design and add some reinforcements to here. To do that, I'm going to select this face and create a sketch. Let's pull in some geometry using the stone geometry tool and select this line here. Also going to come in and select this edge here. Look from the top or the rear. Using the rectangle, constrain, point an object constraint to this line and come in and constrain point on object constraint to this line as well. Right click to cancel the tool and we'll set some height in here. So we want something around about this width. Select the edge, use the height and set something like four millimeters. I'm not going to bother about constraints. I'm just going to place it roughly in the middle, somewhere like this. Obviously you'll constrain it down and hit close. I can then use the pad on that sketch while it's been selected. So the sketch is selected in the tree view and use the pad. Let's pad this say 20 and hit OK. So I've applied a reinforcement to this. Now at the moment, our mesh, so we see the mesh here, if I press the space bar on that, it doesn't include this part here. If we look down, we notice the shape, say in the pocket. The tip of our operation in the body is now the pad. So we can come into the shape and change that by clicking on the field 
selecting the button on the end and looking for pad 001. I can select it from the tree view if I wanted to. Select it here, let's hit OK. Now we have the pad in here. Notice this is recomputed now and the pad has taken and the mesh has been created. But our results, if we look at them, it doesn't include the feature. Let's close that. Click on our analysis and press the space bar so we can see that. So we've got the mesh here, press the space bar on there. The pad is still visible. So we can click on that and press the space bar as well. And if we look at the CCX result by double clicking on it, you can see we've got some missing results in there. So what do we do? We need to rerun that calculation. Let's hit close and come into the solver CCX tools, double click it. Again, go through the process, write the file and then run the calculations. Once it's run, we can hit close. I've got the pipeline, which I'm going to hide. And then I'm going to come to the CCX results and double click it. We can see that in there. Now, when we change the load, you can see part of this is deforming as well. Now we have a factor that I'm going to increase. And we'll go to the slider max first, increase this to say 300. And the factor is 30. Now we can push that further up to 300. You see this is starting to move. Increase this more, say 900. And we see how that's deforming. We can see it deforming through the back as well. And we can change the result. So displacement X, displacement Y, and see how that new feature has been taken into the calculation. One thing to remember is that when we have the results in front of us, if we close out, it disappears. We may want to keep the pipeline visible. And the trouble is, if we double click the results, we can't see that on top of there. There is a way to keep this visible and show the results. And that's double clicking on the pipeline and setting the transparency. So we can drop the transparency or we can use the mode and select something like wireframe. There are different types in here. So we've got surface only, surface with edges, nodes, or the outline. I'm going to go for the wireframe and drop the transparency down and hit OK. Therefore, I'll get the key on the right and I can double click on the results and we see them there. We see the original mesh as we deform it and we can observe the deformation underneath. So I hope that's given you a bit of a crash course into the FEM workbench. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.